Today we're going to continue working with real-world algebraic reasoning. Uh, these questions that model real-world situations where unknown quantities are represented using algebra are real-world word problems. Um, algebraic reasoning is a skill that you develop to solve the real-world problems. Um, now, some of these will seem hard, and you're going to get better at these as you practice. But I'm going to do these with you, and then in class we'll work on some more. And um, really, you just got to break them down, copy uh, you know, the things that I'm writing on the word problems and so on and so forth, and copy all the work. And we're going to work down the problems to solve them. So Tim is x years old, so that's Tim. His father is 5x over 2 plus 6 years old, another expression that represents dad. And his mother is x over 5 years younger than his father. So his father is going to be part of the mother's expression as well. So she's younger, meaning x over 5 taken away from the dad's age. So express the sum, sum means add, right? So we're going to add these together, of their ages in terms of x. So we want to get them all to an x. So Tim is x, so we're going to break this down. What's Tim's age plus the father's age, which he's 5x over 2 plus 6, plus the mother's age. The mother's age is x over 5 younger than the father. So we're going to, the father, and she's younger by x over 5. So taking that away. So we have lots of x terms, and then we have two sixes or numerical constants. So I'm going to rewrite this and put all the x terms, regroup them. So I'm going to use the associative property here. 5x over 2. Another x thing is this second 5x over 2. And then we're going to take away x over 5. And then I'm going to put my two numerical constants together at the end, 6 and 6. So I have Tim, part of dad, part of mom, taking away the x minus 5 years that she's younger, plus the two 6s. So now I've got, um, I've got to find a common denominator of 2 and 5, which their least common denominator is 10. So I'm going to put all of these x things, like terms, over 10. So I have um, an x, 1x. Uh, if I make that 10, that would be 10 tenths x plus making 5 halves x into tenths times 5 would give me 25 tenths. So 25 tenths x plus another 25 tenths x. And this making into tenths x over 5 would be 2x, right? Multiplying by 2. And yeah, I think I'm going to put the x off to the side, so I'm going to write 2 tenths x. 6 and 6, and add those together, plus 12. So I've got that. So now I have 10 plus 25 plus 25 is 60, minus 2 is 58 tenths x. 10, 25, that makes 35, 60, yeah, 58 tenths x plus 12. Well, 58 tenths, they have a common factor of 2, so I'm going to change that to 29 fifths x plus 12, the sum of their ages, and this is in years, right? Years. So there's my label, years. So this would be years. And yes, because it's not just one number, 12 years, it's 29 over 5 x plus 12 years, put that in parentheses, the entire expression gets the label of the years. So that's one down, let's try another one. Adeline has 2m dollars, Bill has 3m over 2 minus 5 dollars, and Cecilia has m over 6 dollars more than Bill. So Bill's going to be part of Cecilia, so she's got 
bell, 3m over 2 minus 5 plus this much more, m over 6. So the sum of their money, express the sum, again, we're going to add, of the money that Adeline, Bill, and Cecilia have in terms of M. So this is Adeline, this is Bill, and Cecilia would be 3M over 2 minus 5 plus M over 6. Um, so that's Cecilia, Adeline, Bill, and Cecilia, A, B, C. So let's put all of our M things together. So we got 2M plus Bill, which has 3 halves, and I'm going to put the M on the end, 3 halves M, and Cecilia has that 3 halves M, and an M plus 6, and then we've got the minus 5 from Bill and the minus 5 from Cecilia. So we have 2 M's, 3 half M's, 3 half M's, and M's over 6. So the common denominator of 2 and 6 is 6. So 12 over 6 would give me 2m plus changing 3 halves to 6. I'd multiply by 3, so I'd get 9 6 m plus 9 6 m plus, well, we already got the common denominator, eh, and I'm going to call that 1 6 m. And the two, eh, might as well put those together too. The two negative fives become negative ten. So, putting all my M terms together, I have 12 plus 9 is 21, plus 9 is 30, plus 1 is 31, 6 M minus 10. 31 and 6 have no factors in common, so I can't reduce that at all. The total sum of money of Adeline, Bill, and Cecilia is 31 m minus 10 dollars. Nice uh, sable there at the end. Next problem. And remember, pause me if I'm going too quickly or if I'm writing too quickly. Um, think about it for a little bit to make sure that you're agreeing with what I'm doing. So Tiffany read X over 3 books last month. Her brother read 4 nights X minus 15 books. And her sister read X over 9 fewer, fewer books than Tiffany. So she's being compared to Tiffany, the sister, not to the brother. Express the total, so we're going to be adding these together, number of books read in terms of X. So Tiffany, again, we're going to add the Tiffany, the brother, and the sister. Add those expressions together, simplify, and that'll give us the answer to this word problem in terms of X. So Tiffany read X over 3. The brother read 4 ninths X. Take away 15. We're going to add these expressions together. And the sister read fewer books than Tiffany. So she would be Tiffany minus her books. So Tiffany x over 3 minus x over 9 represents the sister. So the only numerical constant we have is the brother. Okay, so the common denominator of 3 and 9 is ninths. So if I change thirds to ninths, I get 3 ninths x plus 4 ninths x. That already has the common denominator. x over 3 is the same thing as 1 over 3x, so plus 3 ninths x. And this is the same thing as 1 ninth x. Take away 1 ninth, and I'm putting the x off to the side, minus 15. So we've got all of our common denominator with our x, so let's follow what it says, um, adding and subtracting. So 3 ninths plus 4 ninths is 7 ninths, 7 ninths plus 3 more ninths is 10 ninths, minus 1 ninth would give me 9 ninths. Well, that's kind of silly, 9 ninths is just 1x. So 9 ninths is the same thing as 1x, and you can put 1x, or don't put the 1 in front of it, and then 
left with our expression is the numerical constant, negative 15. So you could either answer it x minus 15, put that in parentheses, books, or 1x minus 15, parentheses, books. Um, express the total number of books read in terms of x. So we've done that. We put all our like things together. Number seven. On a train, there are two x adults, five sixths q plus ten teenagers, and fifty fewer toddlers. Fewer. We'll be subtracting toddlers than the adults. So they're being compared to the adults. How many passengers are on the train? So they're suggesting with this question, how many total passengers are on the train? So they're asking us to find a total, um, and I'm sure representing it in terms of x. So we're going to add these together. So we're going to add all these expressions together. So we have, break it down into the parts, 2x represents the adults, 5, 6, q, letters, so we're not going to be able to add those together. Those are not like things. Plus 10. So that's why it doesn't say in terms of x. It should say in terms of x and q represent the passengers on the train. And the toddlers, 50 fewer toddlers than the adults. 50 fewer minus 50 than the adults. So toddlers is 2x. The adults, 50 fewer minus 50. So the only thing we can put together are the x terms. 2x and 2x makes 4x. Because the teenagers are in terms of q, that's not going to be able to go together. And the 10 and negative 50, well, those are like things. We can put those together. We get negative 40. And that's as simplified as we can get. X is not like Q, so we can't put it together. So this expression is the total in terms of X and Q passengers. So we have a trinomial answer here. So number eight. The price of a movie ticket is $7 on a weekday. During the weekend, a movie costs one and two tenths times. And that's not true. The weekday price. During a particular week, M tickets were sold on the weekdays, and W tickets were sold on the weekend. So M, M is weekdays. I'm on it. Okay, so the weekday is seven dollars times a ticket. M. The week. And is one and a half, or one and two tenths, excuse me, times the weekday, but there were W tickets sold. The weekend is 1.2 times the weekday price. So, oh, it's just 1.2 times 7, and W represents the tickets for the weekend. So we have 7 M's for the weekdays, 1 and 2 tenths greater times that $7, which is $8.40 on the weekend, and the weekdays is 7 M. They are not like terms, so we can't put those together. The answer is dollars. What is the total amount of money earned from the sale of tickets during that week? Well, they sell $7 tickets on the weekdays and $8.40 tickets on the weekends. And they can't go together. They're not like. Last question. This is um, like number seven that we're going to do in the textbook. Just so you know, I'm going to put a seven here. It's kind of like number seven. One third of the pears in a basket were rotten. After the rotten pears were thrown away, after the rotten pears were thrown away, so we're subtracting them, we're getting rid of them, there were still P pears and Q oranges left in the fruit basket. So we have pears and oranges in a basket. 
a third of those pears were rotten and they were thrown away. How many total pears and oranges were there in the fruit basket to start with? Hmm. Okay, so we have the original pears. Let's see, what are we going to do here? The original pears. Minus the rotten pears, right? The third that were rotten. It's going to give me all the pears that were left. Just thinking out loud here in English, writing it down. And that was P, right? That we roughly represented by P. The pears, there were still P pears. But where is the oranges? The original pears minus the rotten ones. Tell us how many oranges there are. So the original pairs, let's just call it X. I don't know what it is. Minus the one third that were rotten has to equal P. The original pairs minus, oh, so you have two thirds of them left. So there's two thirds of the pairs left. I don't even have to use the letter there. So two thirds of the pairs are left. So two-thirds of the original ones, which I'm going to still call X, has to equal the pairs that were left. Two-thirds of how much? Two-thirds of how much? The original pairs, the whole one bar. You take away a third of them. That means, oh, so we could bar model this. Yeah. There's the bar. This is the original pairs. They take away a third of them and throw them away. So that means there are two-thirds left third here and a third here. It's another way you can see it, actually. That's where I'm getting that two-thirds from. So two-thirds left. So x has to equal, well, in order to divide by two-thirds, which we don't divide by fractions, we multiply by their multiplicative inverse. So I'm going to multiply both sides of this by three-halves to get the original pairs is three halves of what p pairs are left. So the original pairs is three halves p. So the original pairs. How many total pairs and oranges were in the first fruit basket to start with? Well, there was three halves of the pairs in the basket to start with. Plus, I don't know how many oranges. They just told me q, so q oranges. That's what was in there to start with pears and oranges. If they took a third of them away, right? This makes sense. If they took a third of them away, there's two thirds of them left. That's the pairs left, which are called P. So I'm multiplying by three halves, the multiplicative inverse, because remember, we don't divide by fractions, because if you divided by a fraction, you would keep a change and flip it, which would just be multiplying by the multiplicative inverse. So if you didn't understand that step, that's what I was doing there. So the original pairs is three halves, one and a half times greater than the ones that are left. One and a half times greater plus the oranges was the original fruit in the basket. Ooh, that's a tough one. And uh, when we get to class tomorrow, we're going to work on similar problems just like this.